Hi everyone, today we will be discussing delirium. My plan is to highlight some key information from the Society of Critical Care Medicine's Pain, Agitation, and Delirium Guidelines published in 2013. I will post the link to the guidelines below this video to refer to for complete detailed information. Delirium is a syndrome characterized by the acute onset of cerebral dysfunction with a change or fluctuation in baseline mental status, inattention, and either disorganized thinking or an altered level of consciousness. The cardinal features of delirium are disturbed level of consciousness, such as a reduced clarity of awareness of the environment, with a reduced ability to focus, sustain, or shift attention, a change in cognition, such as memory deficit, disorientation, language disturbance, or the development of a perceptual disturbance, such as hallucinations or delusions. Other symptoms commonly associated with delirium include sleep disturbances, abnormal psychomotor activity, and emotional disturbances, such as fear, anxiety, anger, and depression, as well as apathy and euphoria. Patients with delirium may be agitated, hyperactive delirium, or they may be calm or lethargic, which is hypoactive delirium, or they can actually fluctuate between the two subtypes. Hyperactive delirium is often more associated with hallucinations and delusions, while hypoactive delirium is more often characterized by confusion and sedation. So what outcomes are associated with delirium in adult ICU patients? Well, delirium is associated with increased mortality, prolonged ICU and hospital length of stay, and development of post-ICU cognitive impairment in adult ICU patients. So due to these negative outcomes that are associated with delirium, the guidelines recommend that adult ICU patients be routinely monitored for delirium. This can be achieved by using the most valid and reliable monitoring tools, such as the confusion assessment method for ICU, the CAM-ICU scale, and the Intensive Care Delirium Screening Checklist, the ICDSC. There are four baseline risk factors that are positively and significantly associated with the development of delirium in ICU. So the first one is pre-existing dementia, number two is history of hypertension, three is history of alcoholism, and four is high severity of illness at admission. It's also important to note that coma is an independent risk factor for the development of delirium in ICU patients. This then begs the question, how can we prevent delirium? So a non-pharmacological method recommended by the guidelines is performing early mobilization of adult ICU patients whenever feasible to reduce the incidence and duration of delirium. So the studies suggest that early and aggressive mobilization may reduce the incidence and duration of delirium, shorten ICU and hospital length of stay, and lower hospital costs. It's important to note that the guidelines provide no recommendation for using a pharmacologic delirium prevention protocol. So there's really no compelling data that demonstrates that this would reduce the incidence of dur duration of delirium in these patients. So let's move on to treatment. There is no published evidence that treatment with haloperidol reduces the duration of delirium in adult ICU patients. Regarding atypical antipsychotics, they may reduce the duration of delirium in adult ICU patients. So let's talk about a study. A single, small, prospective, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, just with 36 patients, ICU patients with delirium who received quetiapine had a reduced duration of delirium. So patients with delirium who were being treated with haloperidol were randomized to additionally receive either quetiapine 50 mg or placebo every 12 hours. The quetiapine dose was increased by 50 mg if more than one dose of haloperidol was given in the previous 24 hours. All patients were allowed to receive IV haloperidol 1 to 10 mg every 2 hours as needed. The use of haloperidol was not significantly different between the groups. Comparable data are not available for treatment of haloperidol alone. Sufficiently powered, carefully designed, multi-center placebo-controlled trials are needed to address the hypothesis 
that antipsychotics are beneficial in the treatment of delirium in critically ill patients. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you thought this video was helpful, please like it and share it. Also, don't forget to subscribe because we do upload videos weekly. And if you have a suggestion for a video topic, we would love to hear what it is by just posting it below. See you next video.